Okay, hi everyone. We are in my little kitchen. Lisa and I are in my um, little kitchen and we're already scrambling. I will be cooking with a few people from the East Coast and we are going to do our attempt at making my version of the New England clam chowder. One thing both Chris and I agree on is that we kind of like stuff in our soup. Um, but I'm not sure if, you know, that is really the traditional East Coast Boston clam chowder or New England clam chowder. Because what I read online, there is a huge debate between Manhattan and um, Boston uh, clam chowder or New England clam chowder. So we are definitely making the white creamy version. I love Manhattan as well. Uh, just depends on what I feel like. Can you start the camera on your phone? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, good. So Lisa's over there finishing up a few things and I think we both needed a little glass of wine. So anyway, let's get going and we're gonna be making New England Boston, New England clam chowder. I still wanna say Boston. Let's do this. I'd like to welcome Emily. And uh oh, the names went off. How did they? Doesn't get matter. Who's Emily? Emily? Left top corner with her hair up. Okay. Hi, Em. Yeah. Hi, Emily. Where Hello. are you? Yeah. Where are you? Where am I? Yeah. Like what state? I am in Illinois. Oh, wow. Okay. Woohoo. Midwest. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Midwest. Love it. We were just in Michigan actually this weekend. So. Where at? Uh, Kalamazoo for our alumni weekend at Western Michigan University. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Now, so bold. How old are you? I am 31. Man, I saw, I, you know, being out of state and so far away, I wish I went to some, at least my high school, you know, class reunion, and I never did. And, you know, now all these crazy people see me on television, you know, it's like, well, they know my whole life, but I know nothing about my class, my, my class. So anyway, well, I hope you had a good time. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, okay, who did we do? Who's Megan? Here's right people? here. Emily, oh. Stephanie, and Alicia. You think I have glasses? I could actually read. Okay, Stephanie. Hey Who's there. Stephanie? That's me. Yeah, good to meet you, Stephanie. Good to meet you. Emily's actually my sister. Um, so <laughs> we're both here together. <laughs> um, but I'm based in Philadelphia. Ooh. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you do? I work at Kelly Education. Uh, I work with our school district here, getting our substitute teachers um, filled in our schools throughout the city. Okay, you know what? That is something I would love to do as I try and figure out what I'm going to do for the seven you years. You should. And hopefully retire when I'm in my mid 60s or something. <laughs> but, um, well, in this, and I know every state's different, but in the state of Oregon, they're, uh, how should I say, uh, loosening up the requirements. Yes. Because of the shortage. And I figure, well, I've got a bachelor of science degree. So, Maybe that'll help get me in, but it's not in education. It's in business. But I did teach preschool for yeah. four years, five years, but I love kids in the school. So that's what I was thinking about doing. You Maybe should totally do it. Substitute teacher, all that. So big kudos for you because I hear a lot of school districts. For some it's reason, a tough job. With it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a huge, uh, huge shortage, like you mentioned right now. Um, so it is not easy to get folks into classrooms. Um, so if you want to do that, you absolutely should. We absolutely yeah, need yeah. folks um, who love hopefully, kids in classrooms. Hopefully my state won't be too difficult. Yes. Okay, we're going to go on to Alicia. How are you? Hello, good morning. Or afternoon, good actually. Morning. Right? Afternoon. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. Well, I had a production call with my TV people today. I had to do a, you know, COVID test because that's what's required of us, you know, uh, to film and everything. And, and as always, I, I'm like, 
if I ever was on time, if I ever <laughs> felt like I had my act together, I don't think people would know how to react around me because I am consistent <laughs> on scrambling, being late and everything else. But Alicia, where are you? I am in Vancouver, Washington. Really? Oh, yeah, I'm just above you, yeah. Well, that's awesome. In fact, my uh, Tori posted it on her Instagram, uh, but they are, um, they have moved to Washington. Yeah, it takes about an hour to get there from here. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, th I, I don't know where my head was off at. I thought, um, yeah, sometimes I think it is off. Um, since we were doing uh, New England clam chowder, I thought we were having people from the East Coast. We were, but I think we had oh, some Oh, because change. we changed the day. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Okay, my next question for you all, because have you made this or are you going to watch me make it? I have not made it, so I'm going to watch. Okay, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch. I um, Yeah, I, I definitely want to learn to do more in the kitchen and get some more recipes and ideas. And I love the things that you make. So I'm here to just watch and take notes and- Oh, I good. Yeah. Um, Emily, have you made this before? I have not. I'll be watching as well as I'm just leaving my job, so. <laughs> That's thought. Are you, are you in the school district or somewhere else? Uh, yeah, I teach at a high school. Okay, that's what oh, I thought. Good. That's what I thought. Man, we got a yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I have made New England clam chowder soup before. I thought I'd give uh, making this soup with real clams before. <laughs> um, hang on here. Fresh clams. Right? Yeah, fresh clams. But I'll tell you, I don't know if you could see that very well but getting that little piece of clam out of there and like what is the best part of the clam it's kind of like ew <laughs> and i'm thinking okay there's this one little piece here yeah i'm gonna show you guys see here's this little clam and there's this little white thing i'm like what, what is that? I, I, I don't even know what that is. It attaches. But do you cut it off? You, yeah, just. So by the time you cut that off, and this little piece that's like the neck, is that what you eat too? I don't know. So my attempt at using real clams, I think, for me, has not been a huge success. So we have these as an option. <laughs> so, as a, yeah, as a plan B, you have to shuck a lot of clams to get this little itty bitty thing. So we're doing. We're going to kind of do use the clams of what I have shucked. Is that the bowl? No, that's the pancetta. Where's the bowl? <laughs> How piddly! This is all we have. And we need a whole lot more clams in our soup. So I'm just going to plop that in here. Oh, yeah. See? Ooh. Ooh. Do we have that? Yes. Ooh. I don't have that. Oh, I know, but I cut it off. <laughs> like, look at that. It's part of the clam. When you Is eat it the really? Clam, steam or clams, you eat that. Yes. Really? <laughs> I don't know. It looks like. I think this is more of a gross. disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? The thing, the, the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes people don't like to cook because they don't know how. See, that's this little piece. And then that. other times, um, in general, I know how to do a lot of stuff because I've done it since I've been like 14 years old. But as the years have gone on, I've learned a lot more. Oh, that's how I did it? Oh, that's not the way you should do it. And for the life of me, I can't come up with an example right now. But yeah, this stuff's like, it's like hard. It's where it attaches. See, like here's the white piece here. Yeah. That's where it attaches. But I don't want that. Okay, I'll cut those while you can. Yeah, can, can, can you do that please? Yes. Because I just don't like it. So anyway, and what I don't like, I use what I like or familiar with. And these look, a little better, 
Well, we're going to save the juice. You know what? I'm going to get another container. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it. And I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. I did buy clam juice. I've never used clam juice in my Boston um, clam chowder or New England clam chowder. But when I read up on a lot of recipes, and that's usually what I do, I read up on a lot of recipes because it's like, I know how to make it, but how are other people making it? Maybe there's something I haven't thought about or I take a little bits of this, little bits of that. And I'm like, okay, that'll enhance what I already know in a recipe. So because I bought this clam juice, but look at how much juice, if you can see it, probably yeah, not because I don't want to spill it. Anyway, this is a lot of clam juice in here. Yeah. So what, ooh. So what I'm going to do is drain this. You want to measure it so you know how much? Well, no, I'll do that before I pour it in. Okay. Because by the time you get rid of all the juice, look at how much clams you have. Hardly any. And I only bought four cans. I probably have six cans of clams. Because when you have, um, I'm a big fan of, when you want, in soups, depending on the soup, I want stuff in my soup. I don't want to feel like that's all I'm eating in broth, except for chicken noodle, because let's be real. The noodles are the key with chicken in it and stuff like that. The noodles and the broth, it's all feel good type of stuff. Okay. So anyway, we are going to finish opening up this. I am basically going off of the recipe that I sent to you, but we're going to send you a revised one because I'm not sure why I had six carrots. No, four at the most. You want about two cups. And celery. Celery was good. The small onion was good. One leek. If you guys don't know what a leek is, it looks like a great big, huge uh, green onion. If you have a really huge leek, I don't know, maybe you want to only use half of it, but I used one about this size and that's what's in our soup. So where are we at in all this? Okay. okay, melt the butter and add the flour. Okay, what I've done already, or I should say Lisa and I, because she helped me, is that we, you can use bacon if you want. I love pancetta. It's a little thinner. You can crisp it up a little better. I'm going to save a little bit and just sprinkle it in on top of the soup, mm -hmm. but I'll use the majority of it within the soup. And that is two packages. One package is three ounces, so two three-ounce packages of pancetta. Or four slices of bacon. Yeah, or about four or five slices of bacon. Um, I, I rush through making this recipe. I, I tell you, half the time when I'm making stuff, I, I just not wing it. Wing it doesn't sound like I know what I'm doing, but I do. But I wing it, and then I'm like, well, how much was that? Like, how much did an actual one leak equal out to? Five cups, one cup, three cups? I'm like, crumb. I should have, you know, done that. So in some of the directions, I have to give you how many minutes you actually cook the stuff. So anyway, so we got the pancetta done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open the rest of the can too. We have sauteed the carrots and the onions and the leeks because you wanna soften them up before you just put them in the soup because I don't like uh, raw tasting vegetables. And you just cook them till they're just tender and they'll finish cooking in the soup. In a separate pan, we are gonna make a roux. And we're gonna start with some butter. Do you guys all know how to make a roux? Roux is, you know, thickening. Okay, good, at least someone does it. If you've got any ideas, uh, Stephanie, pipe in or Emily, pipe in. But we're gonna take a half a cup we're gonna have a lot of, you know, I mean, this is Boston clam chowder. I mean, 
basically a cream soup. So you got to make a lot of cream. A roux is basically a thickening agent. So you use butter and flour, and usually it's in equal parts. So if I'm using a half a stick of butter, I'm going to use a half a, um, a half a cup of flour. And I'll probably just season a little bit with salt and pepper. So we're going to get that going. What kind of butter do you like using? You know what? You guys may have a brand of butter out there. I'm not sure if you have this brand, but I know it's sold nationally. But I'm a big fan of supporting local. So this is Tillamook Butter. It's our local dairy, maybe about an hour and a half from where I live on the coast. And it's great. I use their cheese, their butter, their sour cream, all of that stuff. So whatever butter you want to use, but Tillamook is, is kind of my fave. So we're just going to slice this up. But I'm hoping to get this soup done in time so y'all aren't hanging out here doing nothing. And we're just going to do that butter a little bit. Oh, the other thing too, which I have a tendency to do because I'm multitasking, is I leave my butter on too long and it turns brown. So you don't want brown butter. You just want the butter to melt. So be sure to do that. Okay, I got my little whisk here. Um, normally I would just do this, but since I'm with you guys, I'm gonna actually read my recipe. <laughs> okay, melt the butter, add the flour. We gotta wait for the butter, we'll add the flour. And you wanna, don't cook it on too high. Sometimes when I'm in too much of a rush, I have realized that I did not cook the flour well enough because you don't want that raw tasting flour. You kind of want this deep, rich, rustic flour. And obviously you don't want it to brown, but you at least want to get some of that flour taste out. So really mix it in with the butter. You know, cook it on maybe medium low just to get, you know, it all combined. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna add one cup of that broth. Oh, I, see, I don't even think I needed this no. because the juice from the clams- That's the best. Is gonna be perfect. Okay. Oh, we did have a glass of wine because <laughs> for some reason I'm nervous. If you guys want, take a glass and have a glass of wine with us. Well, I think they're all at work. Oh yeah. I need, I need some of this. Do you, you need some of this? No. Oh, mine's too warm. Okay. So why don't we, why my butter is melting. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. It's it almost browned it. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, Over there. Do, do, do you guys have any questions for me? I thought we had questions. I mean, like, it could be about the show. It could be about my life, my family, life in general. How are you all surviving this whole COVID thing? It's crazy. I mean, I live right up the way from you, so you know how it is in oh, yeah. Portland. So I'm at the, I uh, work at the Air National Guard. So just happen to have today off because we just worked this past weekend. So, okay. um, so as you've heard and probably on the news, it's crazy, right? Yeah. We're augmenting. Yeah hospitals and um helping we were helping with fire support and amongst all the COVID. are you actually in the national guard like um uh, active the national yeah. guard is kind of like army right so i'm in the air national guard so i'm technically air force okay. so i spent 16 years active duty air force really? uh, around well, then, well, thank you for that yeah and then uh, I wanted to provide stability for my boys. So I joined the Air, an active Air National Guard position. Wow. In and I grew up here. So it's funny you say Tillamook because I thought they had Tillamook everywhere because <laughs> I grew up here. So I don't know. Oh, the they do. I, I'm not we sure. We do have it sure. in the Midwest. Yeah, oh. we have it out east too. Okay. And yeah. Support my local. Oops. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Support my local, Tillamook. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, yeah, and, and the one thing I've known, um, Stephanie, oh yeah, Stephanie, Ashley, and me. The one thing, um, Ashley, that I've got, you know, I think we all realize that each state is different on how they're handling this whole COVID, uh, what's required. I mean, now the big thing is, um, I mean, we're not getting into the whole political thing because I'm sure we all have different thoughts on it. Uh, but, you know, you may be required to get a vaccine in order to keep your job, which, Frankly, I think it's crazy, but you know, 
people got to feel like they got to do what they got to do. Um, but anyway, okay. So you're really involved in it. Yeah. Helping other people. And then Stephanie, you're, uh, in the educational. So how's it going for you? Yeah. So in Philly, um, our school district board of education voted for a vaccine mandate actually this past August. Um, so it has been very challenging <laughs> to okay. make sure all of our subs have vaccines. If they don't, they have to test twice a week actually, um, yeah. which is very cumbersome. Um, you know, Philadelphia was hit, we were hit pretty hard. The East Coast cities initially were hit really hard before there were vaccines. Um, so, but we're, we're doing better. It's, it's stabling out a little bit, so that's good. Wow, yeah, that's tough. Because yeah. I know Michigan was hit hard a little bit too. Uh, Emily, how about you? You're in the educational system. How are you handling this whole COVID thing? Yep, so similar to Philadelphia, we do have a mandate that teachers um, have to be vaccinated or they can get tested weekly. Um, so it's been interesting to say the least. Our kids, you know, we have all mask policy at school and the kids are really good about it because they don't really know any different from the last yep. few years. So it really, it's just a normal school year. So the kids are there all day. We're there five days a week. So it's just kind of back to normal with masks by us. Because I was thinking, because you're in the high school, like, are you, are some of the kids saying, like, what in the world? Uh, they were in the beginning, but like I said, most of them were used to it or had a hybrid kind of model, um, the school districts that feed to us. So they were still in person last year, even. So they're just kind of used to all of the things that have been going on. And luckily, we haven't had to do any closing of schools or anything. So it's been good. That's good. That's good. That's good. See, it seems like we're all kind of, whatever our thoughts and opinions may be on it, we're, we're all doing what we have to do or whether we disagree or not, it's what we need to do. So um, no, good. I, I'm, I'm glad y'all are, are doing well. Let me ask you another question. Um, Alicia, Alicia, right? Alicia? Correct. Yep. Alicia. Okay. Um, what's your favorite thing to cook? What do you like to eat? Oh gosh, um, I'm trying to think. I had a feeling you're gonna want, ask me that. And I actually just made a um, what I call like a Mexican quinoa. Um, Ooh, so just Mexican like, quinoa. That sounds good. Oh, like quinoa? Mm -hmm. Mexican quinoa? Uh huh. Yeah. How do you, I mean, do you put black beans in it? What 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 what's yeah. some of the yeah. stuff in it? Um, I'm not a big corn fan, but black beans, fire rusted, um, tomatoes, um, green chilies. Um, um, I just cooked it. Actually. Why did you, um, why did you, um, why did you use quinoa over rice? Um, it's a different texture. I don't know, but I guess it would make like a Mexican rice if I just put rice. Um, Look, I, I love quinoa. It, it's higher, it's a good grain, it's higher in protein. And, and yeah, I, I, I love that. Okay, so she's making the roux. <laughs> yeah, I'm making the roux. I added my flour in it. And it's starting to definitely thicken up. Even though I love these pans, these Le Creuset, they are heavy. My little arms and wrists, man. <laughs> Okay, what do you want? So anyway, it, it looks like this. I think it's cooked long enough. It's had a chance to thicken. So we're gonna add in. That's the butter and flour, right? Yeah. And so we're gonna add in, um, I wanna get this ready for you guys. One cup of the juice broth. Oh yeah. Oh, from the potatoes. What? Okay, I didn't do that yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. We got to add the potatoes and stuff. Okay, hang on, people. Add the potatoes and the clam juice. Okay, we're going to have, we're going to add two of these to the vegetables. Don't Lisa, like this clam juice. I'm going to use that in the room. Oh. So add that to the vegetables. Add that one. How much? The whole thing. Okay. This is eight ounces. So I'm adding two of them to the pot of the vegetables. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna redo this recipe because I, I don't like some of the amounts I did. 
And you know what, for the sake of time, yeah, time. For the sake of time, because I we forgot to mince up the garlic cloves, oh. I always recommend use fresh garlic when you can mince it up because I think it just adds so much more flavor. We're just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of garlic powder, but definitely use the cloves of garlic. So as she's doing the veggies with um, the, clam. the clam juice, once that starts uh, to come to a boil um, or a simmer, we're gonna add in the potatoes. Do you think uh, two's enough? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that what it was on the pan? No, How just much? a little more. We are gonna add in, mm -hmm. yeah. you think this? All right, add in the potatoes right now. We're gonna go ahead and add in the potatoes. So sorry, this is not a professional cooking show. <laughs> We're just Amy in my little kitchen. <laughs> so um, Stephanie, let me go to you. What is your, one of your favorite meals you like to cook or have or something like that? Yeah, I um, love spaghetti and meatballs. So we make the meatballs, we sear them first and then put them in the oven, which just like makes yeah. them perfect um and we like to add some cheese and parsley and just like good fresh i just love big meatballs and spaghetti and all that good stuff so. oh yeah yes okay. <laughs> yeah so we sear them we bake them i've got an italian friend here what do you put in your meatballs so we do the meat we do parmesan egg a little bit of almond flour because i actually have celiac so i have to eat gluten free um, and then fresh parsley, we sear them in the iron pan and then we put them in the oven uh, just so that it, they become like juicy and not dried out. Um, but oh. it's delicious. Yeah. That sounds just about like our family recipe, but we mix beef and pork. And oh, so yeah, that's good. Really good. And I just sear them in some olive oil and then we throw them in the pot of sauce. So and, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cooking in the sauce. So then it just like everybody yeah, does sure. it a little bit. Well, I I really like both versions of that because if you uh, just because if you've made other meatballs for other dishes before, I have learned over the years, you know, because I used to always pan sear them. And you're right, mm. they they would have a tendency to dry out because you've seared the outside, but it takes a little longer to cook inside. But the outside is like already done. But right. baking them. Yeah, gives them a chance to, you know, cook inside without drying out the outside too. Yeah. So yeah, do you make your Those own sauce or do you, what's your favorite jar sauce? Um, I rotate jar sauce. I haven't made my own sauce in a really long time. <laughs> my grandma used to, Emily knows. Uh, it was delicious, but I haven't made it in a long time. We just, we rotate. <laughs> A product. What, what's I your like the. Topic? It's called Sakaruni. Emily's gonna laugh because that's what our mom always gets. I forget if it's Newman's own, but it's Sakaruni sauce, and it just has a really good flavor to it. So that's kind of our our go to. Well, no, she yeah. used to. Do she doesn't. Oh. oh, do you do Newman's? I don't know if Sakaruni is Newman's. Em, do you know? I don't think it is. It's I the type it's of sauce is called Sakaruni. Maybe it is Newman's. It's delicious. Delicious. Okay. Yeah. I don't have to read what's in that. That's interesting. Well, that's great. Yeah. No, yeah. excellent. Um, uh, Emily, what is your favorite dish that you like to cook or have? Or I make homemade pizza a lot, but that's not really that complicated. Um, but I make a pretty mean meatloaf as well. <laughs> okay, what do you do in your meatloaf? Um, you can use turkey or beef, so I use turkey usually. Um, almond flour, I've got onions, spinach, I put kale in there, red pepper, green pepper, onion, pretty much any type of veggie. Um, and then I actually use Trader Joe's um, like mustard barbecue sauce to put on top instead of ketchup. Oh. And it's really, really good. And I'll usually make it with like cauliflower mashed potatoes as well. I don't actually eat that healthy. That sounds super healthy. I'm not that healthy of a person, but... <laughs> Uh, it sounds does the, healthy does the dough come from trader joe's as well or for the pizza dough mm -hmm. i make my own oh good yeah so yeah pretty basic i want to know what is the special trick because i tell you i have tried 
with yeast and everything. Either my house isn't hot enough or whatever. Um, but it doesn't seem to rise. Like they say, oh, it doubles. I'm like, well, this doesn't look like it doubled. I use the quick rise, like instant yeast, and that seems to do the trick. Okay. Okay, yeah. got it. All right. No, you know what? I read up on something that they were, and I can't remember what they were comparing it to, but um, pizza is healthy, meaning it's it, it's not as high calorie. It, and it depends stuff. on what you put on. Well, yeah, if it's yeah. just cheese or something like that, okay, it might be a little calorie. But, you know, if you got your veggies in there and a little bit of cheese because that's calcium and protein in that. Yeah, and, and just veggies for sure. Yeah, but... Like I said, I can't remember what they were comparing it to, hmm. but they said, believe it or not, pizza isn't so bad, but I think it's even better when you make it your own. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to have to try that Mexican thing. I love spaghetti and meatball because my youngest son, Zachary, always wanted that. And I'm going to keep perfecting making pizza. I baked with my daughter before Molly. Uh, she lives up in Spokane, so I don't see her a lot. Uh, but she's kind of like my baker and um, um, it, it just comes out when she does it. I'm like, when I do it, it's like, what in the world? When I got my little thumb, thermometer making sure that yeast and water is to the right thing or I, I'm like, well, maybe I don't wait long enough to have it froth, you oh, know, like oh. it's active or whatever like that. So that is good. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have some other questions from Alicia. Uh, what is your favorite part of living in the Pacific Northwest? Okay. Oops. Hang on. Sorry. We're going to put a lid on these potatoes so they cook a little quicker. What's your favorite part of living? In the well, I'll tell you Illinois, Pennsylvania, you're in my Midwest. I'll always love you. Love my home state of Michigan. And I say that all the time. But the one thing I love about the Pacific Northwest is because it, 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 it's, it's a softer transition from the different seasons, but we still have the seasons here. I love fall. Summers are nice. You know, spring, yeah, we get a, little, a lot of rain and stuff like that. So to me, it's a little colder, chillier than sometimes when you get all the snow because it's just that wet and damp and 38 yeah. degrees, 40 degrees, you know? Obviously the mountains have uh, snow and, and things like that, but I still think there's lots to do here. There's lots of outdoor stuff to do here. And even in the state of Oregon, I have so much to um, explore here yet, but I've lived here, you know, for almost 31 years. And though a wonderful opportunity to, you know, be on television and do, you know, this crazy reality show about our family and stuff. Um, and now, as I look back over what the, the 16 years that we've been doing this season 22 or whatever it may be crazy, it did take up a lot of time where we didn't get a chance as a family to kind of do those exploring and, you know, plan that two week vacation or something because, you know, the, the, this took up a lot of time and it is about our life. And we had the opportunity to do wonderful vacations through the show and in the early years and, and stuff like that. But now that I've remarried in my empty nester years, being a grandmother, um, I'm looking forward to exploring a lot more of the Northwest because um, I'd move back to Michigan in a minute. I'd probably have to relearn on how to drive in snow because I don't <laughs> think I'd be able to do that great in it anymore. Um, but I think all my kids will be somewhere in the Northwest. So here's stay. But I love it that it has the four seasons and there's a lot of nature, natural things to do. Molly could teach you how to drive in the snow. Okay. <laughs> she well, lives in Spokane. They get tons of snow. I live there they as well. Do. Years. Yeah, they really do. But like in Michigan, and I don't know about Pennsylvania and Illinois, if you guys do this, but from my memory, you know, we use salt, you know, to de-ice and, you know, make that go away. I don't really know of people using chains. 
in Michigan, or even studded tires. And it might be because it's a little more flat that you don't need that. But here it's like putting change on tires. I mean, how do you, how do, you do that? Like, what do you do? Yeah, plus that ruins it. What does? The chains and the studded. But that's what you used here though. Right, right. We're back there, you don't. don't. But what ruins the roads out like Pennsylvania and Illinois is the freezing and the unfreezing of the oh, roads. Yeah. Where that can wear that out too. But um, but yeah, thank you for that. Okay, yeah. another, another question. How did little people big world? Who is start? that from? That's also from Alicia. Okay, so how did uh, little people big world start? Um, well, when we started doing the show, um, what was that one show? Big world. I think big world or some show before way back York. yeah or at this pretty much the same time it was on like a year or two before us or whatever the Osborns, i'm not sure they may have come on right when we came on too the whole thing is reality shows was a new genre it was a new thing uh coming on to the you know whole entertainment television and stuff like that scene so producers i think really reached out to other people that they thought would be I don't know, good on TV, I suppose. Um, but back in the day, we did some local TV shows like Good, <coughs> good Morning America. Mm -hmm. uh, Bosley? Oh, Jim Bosley. Yeah, Jim Bosley and Carrie Terry. Yeah, those yeah. were local channels. Yeah, so local channel. So we were on that. <laughs> we were, um, believe it or not, but I would never be on probably on the show again, but Maury Povich, you know, we were on the Maury Povich show back in the day. Oprah, you were on Oprah. We, well, that came through the show though. Oh, so I'm talking about things prior. Oh. And I, we were in the New York Times. I was in a local, uh, a local author did a book on letters to our daughter. So anyway, the whole point being is that producer saw us talking to the public on different quote, you know, television shows or whatever. And so that gave them the idea that they're probably, uh, they, they know how to talk into the camera and, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, a producer contacted us. We did a pilot, a major network turned that down. And so we had to wait a certain amount of time to do another pilot. And we were do that first pilot, we were doing it like with three other families. It was like, how are these different, you know, unconventional from the normal average sized families? How, how do they do life? And so a major network turned that down. And then he still wanted to do our family. So we did another pilot and that's when TLC picked it up. Originally, the show was Little People, Big Dreams. And then it was changed, I think, after the first season, I think, um, to Little People, Big World. And then we've been doing it ever since. And so now a lot of people ask us, well, why aren't the rest of your kids involved? And, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, family dynamics change. My kids, you know, my twin boys are 31 years old. They're, they're, they're married. I believe that. I know they're married. They've got kids. And so some of my kids, you know, they all happen to be average size, but they, ju they just felt like they needed to go on and do something else besides being kind of maybe locked in to the television show and not really being able to, you know, stretch their wings and see if they could, you know, fly out there. So as a mom, I'm like, go for it. You know, I mean, this is your decision. You got to make choices that impact you and stuff. Just because we've been doing this, you know, as a family. I mean, are we sad that they're not part of it? Well, absolutely. But I, I'm very proud of, of all of my kids and, um, you know, the unconventional growing up life that they've had and, and they're doing great. You know, they're all doing great. 